Hey guys, Shane here, Pocket Knife Review. Um, as you can see laid on the table today, we got the Hinder XM24. This knife has been on my bucket list to, to at least handle for a very long time. Um, this is a full-size, hard-use folder. And I feel like this knife was built with intention, and that's what I want to talk about today, what the intentions in this knife were. First of all, I'm going to give you some size comparisons. So you see just how big it is. There's your Benchmade bug out dwarfs that thing in size um here's your bench made super freak still considerably larger than the super freak uh, probably the closest thing i've got to this is the hogue ex04 which is also a beast of a knife and now that we've covered that you got an idea just how big a xm24 is um i, I want to start by saying this is not hinder's most popular knife um i'm sure they sell a lot more xm18s than they do xm24s a lot of that is because the, the XM18 is a little more manageable size. Um, it's a little more manageable price. These are not cheap. Um, but I want to get into why I think Rick Hender designed and built this knife. Uh, I don't know Rick Hender personally. I've never owned a Hender knife. I didn't look up his bow. I just know from what I've heard that he has a background in, uh, as a first responder, firefighter, EMT, that type thing. And I think that, that, that lent in the intentions of of why he designed this knife the way that he did. I also feel like he probably had law enforcement military in mind. And when I say that, ever since I've had this knife, you guys are going to think this is weird, but um, a recurring thought has come to my mind, kind of a memory. Um, guys, I, I'm a military veteran. Uh, I was never really in harm's way um, or anything like that. You know, I, 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 I raised my right hand. I signed those papers to and agreed to die for my country, and agreed to die for your rights. Um, but uh, that's led to me being very interested in, in in military stories and military history. And and several times I've watched the story of uh, uh, of a Medal of Honor winner. I'm not going to mention his name, but I'm, I'm going to give you a brief story on on what happened. Um, he he put his life on the line several times. Yeah, I will mention his name. It was Dakota Meyer. Um, Dakota has become a little bit of a controversial figure, um, but uh, I want to touch on what Dakota did. He put his life on the line several times, and uh, no time how many lives he saved, and his, his command was not there for him. They repeatedly begged for assistance and didn't get it, but the point is, the reason I, Dakota comes to mind when I think of this knife is because one of the men that Dakota had to kill defending himself he had to do so with a rock. Um, he found himself unarmed with this man on top of him, with this uh, squeezing the life out of him pretty much, and he, he ended up he ended up getting the better of him and had to kill the man with a rock. The reason I'm telling you that story is there are designers out there that design knives for the military that don't make any sense to us. Um, I hear people talk all the time about, you know, this is ridiculous, this is too big, this is too thick, this is all these things. And the thing we have to keep in mind is, guys, they didn't design this knife for us. They didn't design this knife for just your pocket knife enthusiasts. They didn't design it, you know, for EDC. They designed this knife to do hard work in extremely stressful circumstances where people's lives are on the line. Um... As a firefighter EMT, I can tell you now that I've had to take the windows out of cars before, not to save somebody's life, but if uh, if I had to do that, and I had to grab something on me to do it in order to save somebody's life, this is the kind of tool that I would want to have to do it with. I know I could pop the trim off, I could cut the rubber seal off and around the window, I could have it out and have that person out of the car in no time. Uh, my point is they think about things like this when they design these big, hard-use overbuilt tactical knives and um you know these guys don't get huge government contracts where because you know not every soldier gets issued a knife guys i i was never issued a knife i was issued an m16 but, but not a knife um, i had to buy my own pocket knife at the time i was too young and stupid to buy a good one but um a lot of your special forces and things like that have special budgets whenever they whenever they start operations and and they look to people like rick hinder or or um, Bill Harsey, or there's several out there that they look to um, for their designs for overbuilt, hard-use military tactical knives because um, they're in situations where they need that kind of thing. 
And it always bugs me when, you know, just your average, and I'm not poking fun to anybody, but let's say your your average uh, stock guy at Walmart buys this knife and then, uh, you know, does a review on it and says, you know, man, it's too thick, it's too heavy, it's too this, it's too that. Well, it wasn't made for you. It wasn't made for me either. I wasn't in a situation in the military where I needed a knife like this, but um, that's why they exist. Uh, you know, so there's really no point in this bashing the design or make you know bad mouthing it because it doesn't work for us it, it wasn't meant for us fortunately we are blessed with the opportunity to be able to own these things if we want to if for no other reason than just a little piece of, of nostalgia or you know to to feel a little closer to you know that type of lifestyle you know if we've lived it before or maybe we've never had to live it we just want to experience a little piece of it and, and that's kind of what I think these these kind of knives are for, and um, you know I, th I think it it takes away all the excuses of why why it is what it is. All the complaints that we would have about it tend to go away when you think about what it was made for. Um, I'm not going to sit here and flip this thing for you because uh, the action's terrible. It, it really is. It it kind of flops out there like a wet rag unless you put some wrist into it. But um, guys, none of that matters. Uh, on a knife like this because it's, it's it's not what it was intended to do it's not what it was made for um and while i'm talking about it i'm, I'm sure you guys are probably seeing that light shining off that beautiful mirrored edge on this knife and i, I kind of wanted to touch on that in this video too guys i'm really proud of my knife sharpening abilities um i can sharpen a knife i, I can make them shave i can make them whittle hair um i don't have a problem at all with my edges um but what I've learned since I got this knife in hand is there are levels to everything. And uh, this knife was sharpened by Mike Himmler. It is a company called Crazy Sharp. And after experiencing this edge, that's when I realized that there are levels to everything. Um, this is unbelievable, guys. He, he sent me a message warning me about this knife before I received it. And I'm kind of glad he did because he wasn't exaggerating. He wasn't boasting. Um... This is just one of those blades that that you feel like it's gonna cut you without you touching it. It's 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 scary sharp. It's crazy sharp. Um, there are a few people in the community, and forgive me if I don't name them all, but um, Mike Emler does an incredible convex edge on blades. Jared Neve tends to specialize a little more on uh, on you know just your, your your flat apexes, and they both do an excellent job for a very reasonable price, guys. These guys are sharpening. You know, super steel knives that, you know, some of us can't sharpen or don't want to put forth the effort to for, for very little money. So hit those guys up. I'm going to try to tag them in the description. I'm not very good at that, guys. Forgive me. But Neves Knives on Instagram, Mike Emler, Crazy Sharp on Instagram. You can get in touch with those guys. Get an incredibly sharp edge on your knife. Um, but like I said, guys, I'm fixing to have to send this knife on. I had an opportunity to buy it. I'm not in the uh, position to do so right now. Uh, the, the gentleman that owns it is wanting to sell it for a a fraction of what it cost new. Because this knife was a user. This knife was intended to be a user. Um, it was never intended to sit in a safe and be pretty and be flicked on Instagram videos. But um, if you're interested in buying it, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. Um, and I can shoot you his way. But uh, hats off to Rick Hender. For building a knife that does work for, you know, probably a small percentage of the population that actually needs something like this. And um, I appreciate the fact that he makes it available for normal folks like me and you to own. Once again, guys, this is, you're going to get tired of hearing this, but this is a, a proud American building an American knife in America. And I'm all about it, man. I'm, um, I'm super proud that, that, you know, of the work that he does. And I'm super proud of the success that he's had. Um, if you're looking for a super polished, high-end, um, I don't even know what word to say. If you're looking for super fancy, guys, this isn't it. This knife was built with intentions, and some of those intentions were deadly, and I love it. And uh, if you want one, they're out there. They can be found. This is probably the best price I've ever heard of on an XM24, which sells for a little over $600. But uh, great opportunity if somebody wants to own one. But that's about all I got for tonight, guys. 
And uh, as always, I appreciate every minute of your time that you spend listening to me because I know you don't have to. Um, I know we all have lives and we're busy. So, man, I really appreciate that. And that's all I got for you guys tonight. Peace. I love y'all.